This is one of my favorite books. It's not Twilight, uh, it's not The Hunger Games, in fact it doesn't even have a love story in it. Except for maybe the love story of me falling in love with the thermodynamic principles of our universe, but that's kind of a really lame and sad love story. I even had the pleasure of being taught by one of the co-authors of this book, Dr. Michael Bowles, while learning thermodynamics in college, so a shout out to Dr. Bowles. So I posted a video on modifying my Integra and I got a lot of responses and people were saying, hey, you should turbocharge your Integra and then paint the inner cooler black because painting the inner cooler black will make it more effective and the guys at Mighty Car Mods have proved this. Now, first of all, let me just say I love the guys at Mighty Car Mods. They make fantastic videos. I've been subscribed to them for years and I love watching their content. It's hilarious and informative. Uh, but when I heard that there was proof that painting an inner cooler black would improve its effectiveness, uh, the engineer inside of me kind of cringed and I thought, how could something that cools by convection uh, increase its performance by adding an insulating layer? And the answer is it can't. So for those of you who haven't checked out the video, uh, I highly recommend it. It's actually a good watch and it's a very well performed test. Uh, it just ends with the wrong conclusion, so please check it out and I will put the video link in my video description. So let's talk about the logic of painting an inner cooler black. It all comes down to emissivity. So emissivity is the rate of radiation emitted from a surface. It's on a scale of 0 to 1, so a black body has a 1, em an emissivity of 1, meaning that it rejects the highest amount of heat via radiation. Uh, something that has a 0 would be the lowest amount. Um, so the two things we're talking about, aluminum and black paint, so aluminum foil has an emissivity of 0 0.07. I pulled that directly out of that book that I was just showing you that I'm so passionate about. Black paint has an emissivity of 0.98, so very close to a black body, which means it will have much better heat rejection via radiation. It'll also have better heat absorption via radiation, but we'll get into that later. So one might think logically that if black paint has a higher emissivity, it'll give out more heat via radiation, therefore I should paint everything black because everything will dispense out more heat uh, and everything will be cooler. Great, the logic sounds fine so far. So let's talk about radiation versus convection, and this is where the problem lies. An inner cooler is rejecting heat via convection. It's not doing it by radiation. It is somewhat, but it's designed to reject heat via convection. Air moves through the inner cooler, that pulls out the heat, that's convection. So what's the difference between radiation and convection? Radiation is heat transfer via electromagnetic waves or photons. Uh, a great example is the sun. The sun heats the earth via radiation. The sun has an internal temperature of 15 million degrees C. The space in between the sun and the earth is at negative 270 C. Uh, and yet our earth has a surface temperature an average of 15 C. So how does that happen? Well, radiation. It doesn't matter that there's a vacuum in between. Radiation is passed via electromagnetic waves, which can pass through anything, uh, and they'll heat up objects that they hit. So they run into the earth, and they heat up the earth. Another great example is a campfire. Um, if you're sitting around a campfire and you put your hand in front of your face, you'll notice your face will feel cooler. Uh, that's because the heat that you feel on your face is actually radiation. The air temperature in front of you is not the temperature uh, of the fire or the temperature between you and the fire. It's actually cooler than you and the fire, uh, assuming it's a cool night that you're sitting in front of a campfire. If it's a hot sunny night, then I don't know why you have a campfire. Anyways, let's talk about convection. Now, convection is heat transfer between a solid surface and a flowing fluid. Uh, a great example is wind chill. So, you know, you'll hear on the news, hey, wind chill, you know, it's actually 30 degrees outside, but with wind chill, it feels like 15. And the reason this is because as the wind is blowing past your arm or your face or whatever, it's taking away more heat than if you, the air were to just be stagnant. Uh, another great example is animal fur. The reason why polar bears have such thick fur, it's not actually to insulate uh, them from con conduction with the temperature around them, uh, it acts as a lot like a wind barrier. So as the wind's hitting that polar bear, that hair is actually stopping the wind and preventing convection from pulling away all of its body heat. Um, the other fantastic example is an intercooler. So an intercooler has air flowing through it, uh, coming in one side hot, going out the other side cooler, and while it goes in, it's heating up this aluminum block. Now this aluminum block is then transferring that heat from, to, from the aluminum itself to the air that's flowing through it. So air flows through the aluminum, picks up the heat via convection, and flows out the back uh, and re is rejected into the atmosphere. And so the key moment in the Mighty Car Mods video that sticks out to me is that about five minutes uh, after they've done the testing with the stagnant uh, intercooler, no airflow going through it, and Marty asks uh, the electronical Stig, 
hey, shouldn't we now do the test with air flowing through it? Uh, and he's absolutely right, they should, and they actually did. Now, this is where the electronical stig leads them astray because he says, hey, you know, we don't need to test it with airflow going through it because emissivity has nothing to do with convection, it's all about radiation. And he's correct in that statement, but the problem is intercoolers are designed for convection, not radiation. Now, how do I know that intercoolers are designed for convection and not radiation? Uh, well, two reasons. First of all, your car moves. So as your car is moving, it's moving through the air, and that air is pulling out the heat from your intercooler. Second of all, they put fans on radiators. Now, why do they put fans on radiators? It's not because when your car is driving, it needs to pull air through it. It is, in fact, because when your car is not moving, it needs to pull air through it. So it doesn't work unless there's air flowing through it, so they put on a fan which pulls air through it while you're sitting there at idle, and you'll see your RPM blip up, and you're thinking, hey, why did my RPM just go up a little bit while you're sitting in the traffic light? Well, it's probably your fans kicking on and pulling air through the radiator to help keep your engine cool, because they work based on convection. Okay, and so now you're thinking to yourself, prove it, and I'm glad you're thinking that because I always want proof as well. Uh, I may only have a marker and this whiteboard behind me, but fortunately, in the excellent test that Mighty Car Mods did, they provided all the information we need to prove it. So, let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, for their intercooler without paint, they had a temperature differential from the inlet and the outlet of the intercooler of 100 degrees C. From the painted one, which this was the uh, experiment in which they had airflow going through it, they had a temperature differential of the inlet and the outlet of 97 degrees C. A 3% difference, and really, that's all you need to know right there. This one cools more than this one because the temperature differential is greater. The temperature coming out of this is going to be less than that. Done. The end. No questions asked. Unfortunately, uh, this is where in the video they said, okay, 3% difference, no big deal, and dismissed it. And so this is where I have a difference in opinion. 3% uh, is actually a pretty big difference. Uh, I'm not a biologist, but I've heard something along the lines of the difference in DNA between a human and a chimp is something like 3%. Uh, the same percentage we're looking at here, yet I can explain to you how intercoolers work on a whiteboard and a chimpanzee probably won't be that great at it. Uh, so anyways, biology aside, let's talk about uh, some more math into it. The effectiveness of an intercooler, basically what you want to do is find out how much heat can that intercooler reject. Uh, and the very simple way of doing that is using this basic equation here of thermodynamics. Uh, Q equals m dot cp delta t. And what this tells us is the rate of heat transfer, which is Q, the amount of heat that this can reject, uh, what rate it rejects it at, is equivalent to the mass flow rate, that's the flow rate of the air moving through it, multiplied by the specific heat of that air moving through it, multiplied by the temperature differential of the temperature at the outlet, minus the temperature of the inlet, or vice versa, just make it positive. So, that will give you the rate of heat transfer, and what you want is a high rate of heat transfer, which means your Tx, the temperature coming out of this intercooler, will be lower. The lower the rate of heat transfer, the higher your air inlet temperature, the less effective your intercooler is, and the more uh, worthless the system is. So, let's compare the heat rejection, the rate of heat transfer of intercooler A, which has, or intercooler 1, which has not been painted, versus intercooler 2, which has been painted. Q1 versus Q2. We want a greater Q for the more effective intercooler. So Q1 is M1 CP times 100, because the delta T was 100. Q2 is M2 CP times 97. Now the mass flow rate's the same because they used a, an air blow dryer to go through both of the intercoolers, and the specific heat of the fluid is the same because they're using air in both uh, tests. So all we have is 100 divided by 97, that gives us 1.03, and that means that our rate of heat transfer is 3% greater for this intercooler versus this intercooler. So our temperature X is going to be less than our temperature Y. We already knew that because they measured it, but uh, I was just basically giving you the science behind it, why, uh, why this one has a greater rate of heat transfer, and you can look at that based on the test that they did. So the whole point is, uh, don't paint your radiator black. So ultimately, the only thing you need to know from this is that the temperature uh, with the non-painted intercooler is going to be less than the temperature with the painted intercooler going into your engine, and that's what you want. So finally, I'll end with this note. Uh, do major car manufacturers design stock into their vehicles black intercoolers or black radiators? 
Uh, no, they do not. Uh, at least I don't know of any that do. Um, so does this mean that major car manufacturers don't understand emissivity or how to design an intercooler? Absolutely not. There is a, a very good reason why they use aluminum for intercoolers. It has a great thermal conductivity and it's great for convective heat transfer. That's why they do it. Um, so this isn't some secret that's just going to suddenly explode across all manufacturers and everyone's going to be painting their intercoolers black. Because the fact is, uh, it's better to have it as aluminum uh, and have it unpainted so that convective heat transfer occurs better. So let's talk about the disadvantages of painting your intercooler black. First of all, insulation. You are adding an additional layer which the heat must transfer through uh, in order to be transferred to the atmospheric air. So you've got air going into the intercooler, it heats up the aluminum, the aluminum then has to heat up the paint, and then the air has to cool the paint which then cools the aluminum, which then cools the air. You can eliminate that step by not having paint on it, so you can have better heat transfer. Restriction. Uh, let, me, let me just say better heat transfer with convection, not radiation. Uh, but radiation is, is minimal and it's not what these are designed for. So, restriction. By putting in that paint into all these channels of the intercooler, uh, you're decreasing the amount of air that can flow through it. And by decreasing the amount of air that can flow through the intercooler, you're decreasing the amount of convection that can occur through that intercooler. Sunlight. If this intercooler is exposed, which you'll see a lot of uh, turbocharged cars, they'll rip off the front bumper, put a big fat intercooler out there in the sun, um, and that's fine, but if it's black, it's going to heat up a lot more than if it was aluminum. Aluminum is actually going to reflect a lot of that heat, whereas the black intercooler, which is almost a black body, is going to absorb nearly all of that heat. Uh, the other thing, other hot objects are in your engine bay. So you've got your exhaust manifold, your engine block, your turbocharger, and if any of these items are near your intercooler, they're going to be radiating heat towards it. Now, wouldn't you want an aluminum uh, core so that you're not you're rejecting that heat rather than absorbing it all from these other options? Yes. So ultimately, the main disadvantage is you're going to have a warmer intake temperature going into your engine. Now, the conclusion: do not paint your intercooler black. So maybe this is just a plug for me trying to impress the guys at Mighty Car Mods so that next time they need a test engineer, they'll give me a ring. Regardless, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.